Hi everyone, Great Power 60 here. A couple of things that I was doing, I actually came into my craft room and I actually decided to do stuff. I got my window open right now because it's a little bit warm in here because I've been in here for a while. This is the first day in about a week that I actually felt like coming in here. And I had promised that I would show, find them here, uh, what I was going to do with these pages. Now I've done a few things with the thinner pages. These are the watercolor pages that I use the, uh, the bottom of my romaine lettuce to stamp. And many of you remember when we were kids, eh, we, we cut out little designs on a, a, a half of a, a potato and made designs and, you know, did all that kind of thing in school. Um, and I just brought it back for fun. Um, I did do a few things here with the thinner paper. Now I had, um, here's the other one. So I haven't done anything with these ones yet. These are the watercolor ones. These are a little heavier. So I'll be able to use those for different things like pockets, tags, labels, etc. So I'm putting that aside for now because I have some other things I want to show you. So let me see if I can put this somewhere where I'm not going to forget about them. Okay. So um, in, in playing with those, I decided to go through my my book uh, stash that I have. I've got tons of books. You know, when I moved in here, I got rid of, I, I think I even have it on video, that I got rid of about 250 books. The reason I had so many books, I had, you know, lots of bookcases. Um, when I was working, I used to go after work or lunch hour, I would go to this store that was a few streets away from my office. And it, it was like a junk store. I mean, you know, really junky, you know, selling pieces of everything, and, you know, secondhand store. But in the basement, he had collected books for years and years. And some of them I could not use. Some of them he saved for me. And I'm really sad that I gave away the set. There was a set a very large set of books about you know this size and twice as thick of Winston Winston Churchill's um, books that he wrote and um, I gave them away and now that I'm crafting which I only started doing a few years ago uh, hence the always panicky when I don't have the right tools or I don't have the right paper or I don't have, you know, whatever it is that I need and I end up buying it and I end up not using it. So, um, and I think that's probably true of a lot of newer, newer crafters, maybe even the older crafters too. Um, we, um, you know, we want to try everything and not just stick with, you know, one thing. And I tried a few things as I was going along. But anyway, um, because I have still a few books and um, magazines, this is it's shiny paper, mind you, but these are old Chatelaine Golden Anniversary Recipe, 250 treasured fa favorites. So these, you know, would be kind of cool to use. So I was looking at that book. I got this dictionary, scriptionary, a thematic dictionary. And what it is, is um, a dictionary of words, religious buildings, anything, and its origin, you know. Um, clothing of the 18th century, robotics, French cooking terms, skeleton, uh, medicine, equipment, and you know, what is the TCP scanner, what in military stuff, insignias, music, uh, what the different, 
And I always thought this was interesting, and I thought my grandsons would, you know, be able to use this in some kind of work. Um, here we've got book terms, occupations, um, publishing and journalism. A screamer, a very large banner headline set in bold print. I didn't know that. I mean, interesting little facts. I've never used it. I mean, here we got curling. This is sports. Um, uh, a thousand and fifty words and expressions you should know. Come see, come sa. French term for so so or. Not one way or the other. When asked my wife how she felt about the president following the scandal, she said, eh, come see, come so. It's kind of like so-so. Um, so it comes up with words, and they're in alphabetical order. Um, you know, discord, if you ever wanted to know where diabolical comes from or what it means. Um... Uh, diatribe. Have you ever wondered what that is? It's a critical de denunciation. My editor wrote a long-winded diatribe criticizing not only my article but also my viewpoint. So it's a critical denunciation. You know? But I mean, these I found these interesting, you know, especially if you're a writer, which I was, you know, I, I don't write much anymore, but it covers everything you know words what it means the trick you know the human body the fallopian tubes what they are blah 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 food finance environment electronics clothing art etc so words that you'd wonder um either where they came from or how they're used and i always thought this was fascinating facts on files so i've kept it and I don't know if I'm ever going to tear it apart, but it's just one of the books that I grabbed from my collection of books, even though I threw away, like I say, a lot. A lot of them were like this one, Pink Sugar by O. Douglas. This one is very um, delicate. It's a little, because the pages are a little thicker than usual for older books. Now let's see where this, I got this in 2001. Um, does it say on here? I'm just looking for a date. A date, a date, a date. Uh, okay, 1924, 1931 was the 16th, so I'm assuming this is 1931. The paper's very thick, which I'm surprised at. And it's a story. I have no idea what it's about. I never read it. Um, yeah. And, um, but I have torn out a few pages, as you can see here. I have used it. So this is great, um, paper for the text is a little larger than, than some of my other books, but um, I can use that in my journals. And then I was going through this. This is a home, and it's kind of a decorator's, um, and I have used some pages in here. I have ripped out some that I've used. Um, some of it is text, some of it, uh, you know, you go, it's just like going through a magazine, basically. Uh, you go through it and you might see like this. You might, you know, want to cut parts of that out and use it in a green somewhere. You may want to use corners. So I'm not going to explain it all. I have, like I say, I have used some for different things. But um, this was a great resource for me as well. I do have other books. And as I said, this is full of recipes. And then this one's Gone with the Wind. I don't know when this printing was. Uh, it's fairly newer, I'm sure. Uh, let me see. Usually they have it somewhere. They have the price of it. Uh, should be on this page. 
I'm just looking, sorry. I'm just looking, just looking. Uh, I think it's 1996, I think, this particular one. And the pages are a little shiny, but some of these pages are really interesting. And there's these that have writing that you could cut out and use, and, and photographs um, that could be used. And I never really went through this to cut out pieces. I thought I might save that for when I'm working on, you know, a particular vintage journal, which, you know, I still haven't done that. And then this last one, let's get rid of some of these books. Proof of Heaven. Um, I had a lot of these. I read this book, um, but I don't need to keep it. Hence, some of these books. What is this one called? The Secret History of Pink Carnation. I use this for my glue book, for my glue sticking book, for when I'm gluing. So I may use this again. Again, the text is large on this. So I just wanted to show you those. So, let me show you what I've done with the, um, you remember I did regular paper, and this one is a little bit thicker, um, still thin enough, but it's still thicker than copy paper, and this one is that orange and brown one that I cut up, I stamped on it, and cut it up into pieces that I'm putting in here to save so that I can build stuff. Now this pink one that I had, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and I ended up using one of, let's get it here, and it's still got pink on it, one of these combination um, stamps that I had, and all I did was take some kind of a pink ink, which is old and it's falling apart, so I might have to throw it out. Um, oh, it's a little bit, still a little bit wet in spots, but all I did was put the whole thing, I just inked the whole thing, and I went around it in different places, and some of it I only inked part to do the sides, and so that's how this became. Now it's still wet, so I can't cut that up yet. This was the first one I did, and I do have I do have a lot of different um, clear stamps to be able to put different designs on things. I don't know how well you can see it, but anyway, um, this is one that I used on the other one, and this one here is music notes. And all I did was do the whole thing, and I just went around stamp and then there were uh, the outside and then in the middle um, I use this one which is just script and again this is very thin paper so it can be used to um, just a moment I'm going to close the window it's a little bit chillier than I want it to be um, yeah so um, I can you know rip this up and use it as a collage I could cut it up in portions and use it, as I say, as a collage or tape, tape it on a page, not tape it, glue it on a page. Um, there's a lot of things that I could do with this, but that's what I've done so far. So basically that's my base. I've got the blue coloring in the background. I've got the uh, musical notes on either side and I've got script in the middle. So I, I could use this for, you know, all kinds of things, just cutting up different, making, I could even make clusters. And the same with the pink one. So the pink one that I have, and I used, um, like I said, I used this one I showed you. And it's really cool. It's got some um, uh, tickets. It's got some... Um, postal stamps on it, script on it, uh, and a stamp. It's got kind of cool stuff. So what I did, and it is hard to see because it's pink on pink,
but I did did hope that it you know came out not too too bad like I say it's still wet in spots and uh, I could probably take my dryer and dry it but I'm not going to bother I'm going to leave it but I just wanted to show you what else I did with these pages and that I can keep them so they're kind of like kind of like a mask make I guess and with this one was the first one that I did and I used it was kind of a gray color and again I used one of my uh, stamps like this that has different patterns on it and then I just cut up so I've got I think these are two by four these are two by four I think these are three by four and these can be um, cut up they can be attached to tags to pockets um, all kinds of things so I'm just building a stash of um, different weights of paper that I can use in doing some crafts. And I did promise I would show you, but I never got around to it. I never, um, you know, I never really, I haven't been feeling like it. I'm going through another stage of grief that I, I really am trying so hard not to, but unfortunately, you know, the guilt. And I'm going through the guilt phase where I should have kept mom at home. Don't want to talk about it because I'll start tearing up. Now, um, and forgive me and please tell me in the comments below, one of you sent me these um, postcards and I really wanted to do something with them. And I'm just not sure what yet. And they are shiny on one side. And then these ones are the retro ones. Please remind me who sent it because, I, I, you know, my mind is. But I love these. And I could even cut these up and use, you know, not the bigger ones, but I could even use it as a pocket, round the corners, um, and put these in a vintage journal. So I'm, I'm starting to make journals I'm starting to make journals um, with different variations and like I mentioned before um, I really like doing art journaling but I'm starting to get into junk journaling as well and um, I'm not good at it some junk journaling I don't really like um, I don't really like the ones that are all mixed up with like cereal box. I mentioned it before, you know, anyway, I won't get into it again. I mean, everybody has their own way of doing things. And I, while I was looking uh, for stuff, I found this stash and I remember doing these and I do think I have a video on them um, where I decided to start, um, I used my sidekick and started cutting up little pieces of ephemera that I'll be able to stick on just about anything. I got a paper clip in there. Um, and these, you know, I can easily uh, build these up. And let's see if I can find, see these ones here are, are, um, are cut out, but you know, you can, layer them, add different colors, doing things and making that and then perhaps ripping it or cutting it or whatever. And then I'll have a little cluster. Now, the next thing I want to do, which I absolutely love the idea, is doing cluster books. And I thought of using these that I kind of played around with, but I've changed my mind because I have another idea for that. But if I could these are eight and a half by 11 but this is a 12 by 12 and it's double sided I don't know if I'm ever going to use it but um, what I've seen so far I'll put the links below because right now I'm tired it's late uh, my rhythm is totally off 
but I don't think um, a 12 by 12 would do me well because I don't have the shelf space. But I could do maybe um, an 8 by 12, or maybe I could do two six sixes. I could maybe do two six by 12 and um, add a bunch of pages cut them cut them down and make um cluster books and i've been watching them and i like the idea because it is not only a storage idea but when you're flipping through all the pages and you've got all of these different clusters made whether it be uh fabric vintage um paper uh geometric or whatever you know this is what i think it was Gail. It could have been Shabby Dabby Doo or G. Kerr. I can't remember. One of the ladies um, just made some that are unfinished. You know, like I could easily rip this one off, glue this together. Glue, glue, glue. Glue this together with, with various things, um, you know, um, uh, like that, glue that, and then, then just stick it in the book with maybe a, you know, a glue dot or something, maybe a little bit of whatever and, uh, and save them. And that way it's not stuck in a bag like this. And I'm using my scraps. So I'm getting all kinds of ideas for these pages that I have created with the paint and I like the texture because the paint in some places has risen so it's not flat and it kind of adds a little texture to it so that you can you know you can create all kinds of of great things with that and I and this one here because it's let me see if I can get at it um, because the stamp that I use for this actually has three settings, you can, you can stamp out mm, the middle, the middle part that can come out alone, or you can stamp out the outline. That's the second one. And the third one is that you get sort of a 3D effect where it's partially I hope you can see that, and I hope I've been in camera shot all this time. Um, and you can, you know, brown those edges and make it stand out a little bit more. Maybe not use such a big piece here, but let me just... I'm not fussy on these because they don't, they don't hold the ink like I would like it to. It just gives it dimension when you do that, I find. Uh, I'm just using the uh, vintage photo. photo. Oh, can't even talk tonight. Like I say, you know, um, it's, I, it's really been a struggle for me um, going through mom's things and not doing a damn thing with them. My hallway has got boxes everywhere that I've got to go through and um, I am just not in the mood. So you got a little bit of life update. I've, I've been going through a bit of anxiety. I've been going through financial stress of sorts. And um, you know, every time I turn around, there's something else that's costing me money cost me a thousand dollars to get my new tires which I had to get or my poor car probably would have lost a tire somewhere on the roads and I would have been stuck that would have been a disaster so you know by browning it is just defining it so and then you know you can add something else I don't like that but you know I'm sure I could find something to stick in the middle and you can add dimension to it too but if you want things to be flat and then to save it, you know, and then maybe I want to stick it on on here and then rip this 
and glue it down on this paper. Now I may not want to glue it on that side. I might want to glue it on this side to get more color around it. Anyway, um, I will try and remember to link that below so you can see. But I just wanted to show you, I do have these papers that I have to decide. Um, I think I'm probably going to make clusters out of these. I had thought of using them to make tags where I could have this taped onto maybe a file folder piece or, you know, a heavier stock, even, you know, one of my 12 by 12s, you know, have it cut in there so that it's more solid and then, you know, make a focal point and design it. Um, you know, so there's lots of things I could do. And maybe what I'll do is one day this week, just sit down and create some clusters. I'll create a cluster book. Maybe I'll do that on, on film and, um, share it with you that I'm just as clumsy as everybody else, but I'm learning. I'm having fun with things. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, maybe I'll even grab some scraps of fabric, but I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll keep that separate. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember which one of the ladies. Um, so she created one for, oh, I think it's, it might be Gail. Um, she created one for, um, uh, paper clusters, one for unfinished so that it would be something like this or something like this that I've just ripped up and said, okay, well, you know, um, I'm going to glue that together, just stick it in there because I like it. I want to use up all of these scraps. And then when it comes to um, putting it in a book, I'll put it in an unfinished so that it needs a vocal point. It needs something else. And, um, then there's, she's got one for fabric where she's got all kinds of fabric. Then there's one where, um, and I think, um, Carrie the crafter also made some button clusters where it's just a button sewn on to pieces of material and lace, maybe ribbon and so on, sewn it together and put it in a cluster book so that when it comes time for him to add things to his journals, he can grab the grab the cluster book and go through it. And I know it's not a new idea, but um, I've been away from crafting a while and I've been in a different direction crafting, not doing journaling. So I'm starting to watch some of the older uh, videos and I'm finding that some of their ideas really would work well for me. So if I did make a cluster book here of uh, unfinished fabric, if I had another one, perhaps I'd be doing one um, dimensionals, blah, 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 etc. Whatever, you know, whatever I decide to use. And that's what I would like to do because I do have bags of these shapes that I had made. And I don't know if you remember in my old videos, let me grab this that I got from, I got this from my, my bathroom, but I had something like this that I had bought one of these, you know, acrylic things that I had bought from, um, uh, Dollar Tree. And I had put, you know, like the large circles, I would put them in here. The, um, you know, the pieces that were like, you know, cut out the, you know what I mean? <sighs> the outside, whatever, I'd put it in there and I'd have them all stacked. And then here would be different, um, smaller pieces that... I, I would do. So I would have these all categorized and they'd be standing up and there'd be quite a few of them and I would have them all together. And then, um, and they were always on my desk. So if I wanted to make clusters or if I wanted to make a hidden paper clips or if I wanted to use it in anything, I had them available. But I, at that time of doing these, I really didn't know 
what I was going to do with them. I, I I tried to watch a Septeria 18 doing, you know, how she layers things and seems to, you know, rip paper down and, and, you know, for some reason, all her colors seem to go together. Whereas when I do them, they don't seem to go together, you know, and adding, you know, little words and things like that. Um, so I made all of these things, but never went anywhere with it. And now that I'm getting more and more experience, and now that I'm doing um, some journaling, I'm feeling a little bit better about taking a chance on doing crafts. Anyway, guys, that's it for me for today. Uh, I just wanted to share a, a couple of things that I'm going to be working on. I'm trying to get back to crafting, but I go through highs and lows a lot. Um, having to deal with a lot of paperwork, having to phone, make a lot of phone calls. And over Christmas, you know, I didn't want to do any of that. So I'm finding myself wanting to do some crafting and I'll get in here and I'll do a little bit and then I'll walk away because this was mom's bedroom, you know, and it's not as easy as I thought it would be to transform it into my craft room. So, anyway, I'm not going to burst into tears like I usually do. I just wanted to share what I'm doing and try and bring you more content. Please be patient with me. I still have a lot to go through over the next few weeks. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Thank God he'll maybe able to help me with my anxiety. I don't want medications. I, I no, I, I don't need antidepressants. I don't need what I need is for myself to maybe get into yoga, get into some Zen place where I can breathe. That's why I bought a yoga book at, um, Michael's when I was there. I think I showed it to you in one of my, I haven't even had a chance to read it. My grieving process go has gone from anger to hurt to guilt, especially guilt. And I need, I saw this, the power of mindfulness. I need to really practice. And I thought maybe late at night reading some of these things will help me calm will help me accept things will help me hope which is my word for the year hope that i'll get through this anyway that's it that's all i'm sharing um thanks for joining me thank you so much for being patient i i still I want to get in here. Crafting is so therapeutic for me. I'm finding so many ways when I'm in here to just get lost. The thing is, is to get my camera on and share it with you. And that's what I'm hoping I'll be able to do over the next little while. And I want to try all kinds of new, um, I have got so many, um, there's stamps that I have not used that are just beautiful um, and maybe making some cards. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right now, I want to kind of get things organized and um, and try and get my stash. I really want to get, you know, get things organized. And I think these cluster books are an absolutely brilliant idea, especially for me, where I can sit them right there and pull it out and know that the things that I'm looking for somewhere in that. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. It's longer than I expected. And I hope to see you again next time. Please, if you are kind enough to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button to let me know that I have people watching me. <laughs> and, um, hopefully we'll bring you better content and thank you so much for those of you who have been around a really long time you know who you are i thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i did get a card 
and I think it was from Mary. I am not sure. I apologize for not showing you, but I cried when I opened it, which made me feel good. And I also got a Christmas card from Thelma, which I haven't thanked her for. Thank you, Thelma. And thank you, everyone, for joining me. And we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.